Hello, Caesar here, and this is going to be a first impressions video on my uh, Z-Pax R-Call backpack. I just got back from a weekend trip where I tested it out on its very first trip, and I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, this is going to be more of a compliment uh, type of a video to my a blog post where I write more detailed information about the backpack. As usual, I'll put a link in the description below, so check that out. Uh, I'll give a few, you know, kind of basic specifications that, of course, if you are uh, too restless to go ahead and read my big long, you know, review, uh, for instance, if you are watching this, you're probably into ultralight backpacking or interested in it, and the weight on my scale of this pack is 710 grams. Now, that's slightly, slightly heavier than z has, and that's because of uh, a few customizations that I had done to the pack. Uh, but anyway, as I said on my blog, it'll be more detailed information, more like kind of brass tacks on the pack. But I find that it helps to kind of have a video to show it off, see it, or I can show you, like, especially when there's customization, so I can show you exactly how it looks and operates. So without further ado, let's jump into it, right? So uh, I want to point out a few uh, small things that are improvements first before I get into the customizations because I've I own a few, several Z-Packs, backpacks, and I've noticed throughout the years now, they've been, you know, improving and evolving and getting, you know, actually better and better. And I, you know, I can really tell, especially just like on, uh, you know, very practical things uh, that you can tell they put, they've been putting a lot of thought into how their packs are designed and how they handle, right? And one thing is the shoulder straps are much improved. I mentioned this when I talked about my frameless pack, my go-to frameless pack is a Z-Pack Zero, which I have in hybrid Cuban fiber material, and I really like that, you know, I notice a big upgrade in the in the shoulder pads. Well, same thing with the Arc Hall. And there's a yet another upgrade, which is that the back of the shoulder pads and also the back of the of the belt are in now mesh, and it's grippier, there's a little bit more friction, so it kind of hugs your body more and I really like that. Uh, so that's nice. Um, I'm trying to cover the things that are kind of easier to explain and show off in the in the video, right? I'm really happy with the hip belt and quick story on my I noticed this right away and one of the reasons why I noticed that well, let me show you the hip belt first, right? So here's a hip belt. Oh and by the way this is all packed up from my trip. So I'm gonna do a quick kind of what's in my pack video for my winter kit. Um, so if you're interested in that, you know, check that out. But yeah, here it is all packed up. I have not unpacked it from my trip uh, just yet, right? But the belt. The belt, as I said, has got that grippy, nice mesh on the inside. Very comfortable. And now the quick story was the, the first thing I noticed was I got to do like kind of like a trial by fire because on my way to the trailhead, I'm, I was taking public transportation to get out to the woods. I was running to a bus because I was running late, unfortunately, so I'm running to the bus so I can get to the train station to catch, you know, um, or another bus to get out to the woods. And I didn't realize it until I got on the train. I was like, whoa, I just sprinted like I ran as fast as I could because I, I barely made the bus. It was like just arriving as I got to the bus stop that before I left the house, I made sure to cinch it down and everything. And I ran all the way there and like sprinting full force with this pack on it handled great, you know, I think and that I think that says a lot, right? Um, and it said a lot too about the grippiness, about the mesh, as I said, right? So that was a nice first kind of random test that happened that confirmed that, yeah, the, these improvements are definitely uh, something nice, right? Uh, okay, yeah, so you already, as you probably already know, there is now... It comes standard uh, are the load lifters on top. I have only had a few other backpacks that had load lifters, and honestly, I wasn't that crazy about them. But the way this pack is designed, as you can see here, the load lifters are it's like integrated into it. It actually works uh, quite well. I adjusted them like one time, and then I found that I was that was enough, and then I, I left them alone. And the you know the pack fits me quite well, right? This is the, so the medium everything, medium hip belt, medium 
you know, a torso, kind of like the standard stock uh, sizing. Um, so yeah, but okay. So those are nice little things, right? But now on to the customizations, right? This will be no surprise if you saw my uh, review, like my first impressions on my frameless Z-Pack Zero. I opted for a full mesh, or I'm sorry, instead of a mesh pocket, I opted for a full fabric front pocket. And that's because, same reason, I do a lot of bushwhacking, go off trail, and here in Scandinavia there are a lot of thorns and brush and and sticks and pokey things that will rip mesh up. So I'm not a big fan of mesh on backpacks. And this is, I think it was a $10 or $15, can't remember now, like um, upgrade that I just, I sent Joe an email over at Z-Packs and I said, hey, can you do the front pocket again? He said, sure, just add that as a custom thing. So if you so desire, you can do that. All right, so there you go. I also, I opted for the um, flat straps as the base strap. Standard, this comes with like the uh, like the Dyneema thread straps, kind of like the side here. I, I really like the this design here on the side, these like side uh, compression straps, you know, because you can hang things from here, thread things through here. If you got like a fishing pole or whatever, you can, you know, that'll, you know, grip onto it, whatever. And an improvement too is that it, they're now harder to pull, but actually, uh, it, it might that might sound strange for you know those of you that are not familiar with the other packs that it's harder to adjust, uh, and that also goes for the frame. That to get the flex frame, you know, have to pull on these uh, cords. But the reason uh, was it was you know done on purpose so that they don't slip out, so that it holds fast. And actually, I think you know that's a nice improvement. Though in fairness, I didn't really have that much of a problem with the my my last backpack the arc blast of the the uh the thick the cord slipping with these like um with these pull uh tabs or however you call it right uh there was some slippage i would have to adjust the the frame a bit because there's more tension on it right so i would imagine that with this new like you know thicker cord that it's going to be even less of a problem Right, so yeah, so that was the those were the two customizations that I did. It was the the straps rather than cord on the bottom, right? And then I got the big pocket here, and I'm very very happy with this big pocket. There's also been an evolution for this pocket too on another uh, Z Pax uh, Zero that I owned that I still own. Um, it, when I asked for like a, a solid pocket instead of mesh, it was not as uh, accessible it was like kind of like an envelope and you would zip it and it was like you would have to kind of it was hard to get stuff in and out well it wasn't like hard but it was uh, definitely harder than this because this can open up i can stick my whole you can hear me i can stick my whole arm in there right i can kind of look inside and see right it's really big zipper uh and it's double zip and it works great all right so i can ramble on and on about this pack again first impressions are very good I'm hoping to get a lot of good usage out of this if you're looking for uh, an explanation as to why I opted to get a, a beefier more robust pack with a robust frame and all that be sure to check out my blog article for comparison to uh, for those of you into ultralight backpacking something that really put things in perspective for me because I've tried on you know lots of different backpacks in my day and backpacks in my day and that includes ultralight backpacks too i used to own a go light packs and i still own a, a mountain laurel designs pack and i have several zero packs i've made my own packs like uh, you know a make your own gear diy packs and all that and i've tried on other packs too but um my point is that something that put me into perspective is thinking back on my packs one is that the first impression was not as strong like just my first trip like my maiden voyage with my other packs they were you know some were good some were bad you know but uh this maiden voyage was like wow like i am very happy with this pack like just you know all little things like i feel like you know it's gone from like a nine to like you know 9.5 you know, with from my arc blast to like this arc haul, 
uh, I'm very, very uh, impressed. Um, but anyhow, uh, something else too to consider, to go back to perspective, I'm all about perspective, if you see my other videos, right, is that my Golight Jam uh, frameless pack weighed, and this is after trimming too, I did the classic thing when I got into ultralight, um, this is a very, this was at least a very common goal light has since gone out of business, but it was common at the time for people who needed all their ultralight to get the goal light jam. It was affordable, it was pretty good for the weight, and a classic thing to do was take a pair of scissors, just like Mike Cleland, you know, recommended, many other ultralight, you know, um, people that have been in the game a long time. Take a pair of scissors and trim stuff off, and that's what I did, because there was stuff on the pack I just didn't really need, uh, and it was like, you know, these other options, you know, I was never going to take ice axes out with me so clip and other little straps and stuff point is this i got this frameless go light jam pack uh 50 liter pack uh and this is 60 liter right i got that down to i think 850 grams something like that right and that's after the trimming this is 710 grams and you know it can hold more weight it's got a frame it's bigger capacity it's got more options even than that because it's got the base straps, it's top straps, you know, it's got so many things, way more comfortable belt and it's, you know, got a better cinching mechanism, um, more comfortable straps, so yeah, but okay, I ramble on enough, if you want more, check out my blog. Thanks for watching, I hope this is helpful, I noticed there are not that many videos out there on, um, they are call anyway, so here it is in beautiful black and green Dyneema, I'm a big fan this color color combo too right and yeah very happy so also check out when I take out everything out of this pack I'm gonna record that in just a few minutes so you can see what I took with me that's in here this is a base weight of 4.5 kilos and then I took a satchel with with me that's about like a little I think around half a kilo too right so it's pretty good base weights for a winter trip Temperatures were in, I think, a low of minus 9 centigrade, right? But anyway, that's for the next video. I'm just very excited right now, so yeah. Our call. Awesome backpack. Looking forward to using it a lot in the future. Alright, take care. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.